The UFC 279 Nate Diaz vs. Ferguson took place Saturday, September 10 from T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. And a wild 24 hours will now see a newly scheduled welterweight war when Nate Diaz faces off against Tony Ferguson in a highly anticipated high-stakes main event. Let's talk Diaz vs. Ferguson. You have the former interim UFC lightweight champion Tony Ferguson. 26 and 7 fanning out of California and returns to welterweight for the first time in over 10 years and hopes of making a run for the title. Ferguson is a very well-rounded fighter and very gifted in most areas. He has a great wrestling base, solid, striking world-class ground skills, and has scary toughness. He never seems to get tired, which is a weapon constantly attacking his opponents with vicious pressure, wearing them down. But the thing that makes Ferguson so scary is his unpredictable style. You just don't know what he's going to do next. And it makes him almost impossible to fully prepare for. But on the other side of the octagon, you have the 15-year UFC veteran and Ultimate Fighter Season 5 winner Nate Diaz. 21 of 3 fighting out of Stockton, California. And it tends to shake up the UFC once again by taking out another surging top contender. What can you say about Nate Diaz? He is one of Stockton's own and one of the toughest fighters on the planet. He possesses high-level ground skills, but he loves using his world-class cardio to pressure his opponents with a solid boxing game and slowly pick them apart. And I can't wait for these two to collide. Tonight's betting odds have Diaz coming in at a small plus 150 underdog and Ferguson comes in at a minus 1 for his favor. And here's how it went down. They came out swinging to nobody's surprise. Early in round 1, Diaz checked a late kick and Ferguson chin was bleeding badly. And Diaz was starting to lance. Nice punch combo, Tony, who has landed some nice kicks and was exploding in and out, attacking, looking fast with his slicing elbows and his wild spinning attacks. Diaz was having success with his boxing, and his hands were looking good. Landed some nice combos throughout the night. The real story of the night was Diaz's success with his boxing, and Ferguson was having a lot of success with his leg kicks. Beating up Diaz's legs, and Diaz was getting frustrated. Diaz, in round three, started bizarrely walking around the ring, acting like he wasn't going to fight a few times, completely turning his back to Ferguson, putting his hands on the cage and his hips. I honestly wasn't sure if he was quitting for a moment. There was a lot of theatrics. Round four started in this fight, had a great pace. It was a back and forth fight, and it was close. Diaz started landing some nice shots with good pressure, and Ferguson shot for a takedown. Diaz dropped back for a slick guillotine and forced Ferguson to tap. Nate Diaz defeats Tony Ferguson by submission around four and receives a $50,000 fight of the night performance bonus for his efforts. All right. Here's my final thoughts. This is a fight that should have happened a long time ago. And in a fortunate twist of fate, we got to see it. And Diaz, just like every fight he is in, he brings it like a true gangster and is always repping 209. We have never seen anyone quite like Nate Diaz, his brittle, honest, not giving a fuck approach, fighting anyone, anywhere, anytime. And it's true. Authenticity is what made Nate Diaz one of the most popular and respected fighters in UFC history. Let's hope the UFC figures out how to resign Nate because he has delivered so many incredible performances and the UFC wouldn't be the same without him. All right. Here's some quick stats on Diaz. He is now 22 and 13. He was the Ultimate Fighter Season 5 winner. He's a 15-year UFC veteran. He has 13 wins by submission, 5 by KO. He now holds wins over Conor McGregor, Anthony Pettis, Donald Cowboy Speroni, and now Tony Ferguson. What's next for Diaz? Diaz told Rogan in the post-fight Octagon interview. He said he had a love-hate relationship with the UFC and thanked the boss, Dana White and the UFC. But he said he wanted to get out of the UFC for a while and open up another sport and show the fighters how to do it. And then he said he'd be back fighting in the UFC kicking ass. Let's see what happens with Anderson Silva and Jake Paul. If Paul wins, I could see the super fight with Jake Paul versus Nate Diaz. Guys, let me know in the comments what you thought about Diaz's fight tonight, his performance, and who you think he should fight next. Thanks to all of our loyal fans. Don't forget to smash that like button. This is Kevin, see you next time.